Okay, let's talk about some uh, explicit versus implicit differentiation here. So every derivative we've done so far has been explicit. And what that means is that this variable right here in the dx, it corresponds with the variable in the expression that we're trying to uh, find the derivative of. So for something like this, it's very simple. We would just say that this uh, three would come to the front, we'd subtract one and get three x squared. Done. Very simple power rule, um, no chain rule, product rule, nothing special like that going on. Very simple problem. Um, this one looks very similar, instead of x to the cube is y to the cube, but we run into a little bit of a problem because our variables don't match. I've got a x down below and a, and a y up for, the, for the expression. So, um, we start off the same way. The 3 still comes to the front. And uh, I end up with 3y squared. But what I have to do here is, is use a chain rule because this is not just a simple expression of x, which is the way the rule is written. So in order to use the chain rule, I now multiply by the derivative of the inside portion, right? So we're gonna call this the inside, that y in there. Unfortunately, I don't know what the derivative of y is. And so I simply call it the derivative of y. Well, the best I can do with that is just say that it's, it's dy dx. So we would say this is 3y squared dy dx. And that's the best we've got. So it just stays sort of uh, unfinished feeling actually at this point. Um, but in terms of what, what rules we've used and how this is fitting in, this isn't really any different um, than, a, than a chain rule. It's just that instead of actually evaluating the derivative of the second piece, we have to sort of leave it unfinished. This is going to happen every time the variables don't match. So I can, before I even start, I can pick out the, uh, the terms that are going to get a, a dy dx. So this one's going to get a dy dx. This one's going to get a dy dx. These two are going to be okay, right? Because this is just this, you know, the variables match here. That's okay. And over here, there's no variable at all. So th that one's just going to be zero anyway. So if I start taking this derivative, I've got from my x cubed function, that's going to be 3x squared. And then from my y cubed function, that's the other one that we just did. That's going to be 3y squared dy dx. From my 8y term, I'll get negative 8 is the derivative of 8y, but I do have to include the dy dx, the derivative of the y portion, and then plus 0, actually, right, for the, for the 10. Um, so often, uh, what you do with this is you could um, combine the terms that have the, the dy dx. I could say this is uh, 3x squared plus dy dx um, times 3y squared minus 8. And for now, since we're just asked for the derivative, we would just leave it as that. Uh, another way you could ask this problem, we could have you know uh, chain rules, product rules, you know, all that stuff inside of here. And so th this one will be slightly more complicated. So if I tried doing this, one thing I would notice right away is that I've got a y in here. So again, this is going to be one that gets a dy dx. When I, you know, whenever I end up taking that derivative. So the product rule tells me that this is going to be 3x to the 4th times the derivative of y squared plus y squared times the derivative of uh, 3x to the 4th. So if I evaluate this derivative here, 
this one's going to be 2y dy dx. And this one is going to be 12x cubed. So that I can just fill in my other pieces. I've got 3x to the fourth times that whole thing plus y squared times that whole thing. My multiplication I can combine. I can essentially squish that all together. So I would have 6x to the fourth y dy dx plus 12x cubed y squared. And it, as far as the question that it's asking, this derivative, th this is our answer. In reality, though, it would be pretty rare that we'd stop right here, that we'd have this sort of a question. Usually, the instructions for this are going to look slightly different. So I'm going to change it a little bit. And I'm going to say that this is equal to 25. And we are supposed to actually find dy dx. Well, if this was equal to 25, then over here, I would have the derivative of 25, right? And this step, I have derivatives. Well, the derivative of 25 is just 0. And so as I simplify this, same thing's going to happen here. This whole thing would just be equal to 0. And then I could actually solve for dy dx. So my next move would be to take the 12x cubed y squared over to the other side. So that's going to be now negative 12x cubed y squared. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 6x to the fourth y. And I will get that dy dx is equal to now negative 2y up on top and uh, x on the bottom. So I had these two cancel to leave me with a negative 2 up here. And then this whole thing canceled out all, of, all but one of the x's. And this y canceled out all but one of the y's. So I had a negative 2 and a y left on top, and just an x left on the bottom is where this comes from. Uh, let's look at one more. Complicated looking expression here. We're supposed to find dy dx, just like the second directions in the last problem. So first thing I'm going to go through, do it, is just go through this problem and find all the derivatives. I can point out one more time. Uh, here are my two implicit spots, right, where the, where the variables don't match. So I'm going to get both of these are going to get a dy dx as I go through this problem. Um, so I'm going to end up with uh, this 2x squared will become 4x, right? And then this 3x will just be 3. My negative 2y will be negative 2 dy dx. And this is all going to be equal to 12y squared dy dx. So that one's coming from there. Now, same as in the last problem, I want to get my dy dx uh, pieces together and separate from everything else. And so I'm going to I'm going to take this one over to this side. So I'll end up with 4x plus 3 over here. And that's going to be equal to 12y squared dy dx uh, plus 2 dy dx. Well, now I've got dy dx in, in both terms over there, right? So I could factor out a dy dx and I'd be left with 12y squared plus 2. I still have my 4x plus 3 over here. And now I just need to divide both sides by 12y squared plus 2 to uh, 
get dy dx isolated. So I'm going to have 4x plus 3 over 12y squared plus 2 is equal to dy dx. These are actually some of my favorite problems, just because I think it's so cool that we weave this dy dx part you know, as an undetermined derivative, yet through the process, we actually end up knowing what it is. You know, maybe not only in terms of x, because we do have the y mixed in, but you know, we have dy dx. And remember, the whole idea is that this is slope, right? And so if I want to know the slope at a specific point, I would get an x and a y value. And I could just take both the x value and the y value and plug them in, and my result would just be a number. And that number is going to be you know, the slope of the tangent line at this point. The same as it would be if it were a much less complicated derivative. Um, I've got one more on here we can try. We've got a little bit more time. We'll try to do this one real quick. I'll, uh, I'm not going to explain this one quite so much and you can see more how the, how the steps would actually look. So I've got 3y squared dy dx plus 2y dy dx minus 5 dy dx minus 2x equals 0. So I'm going to have dy dx times 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. Take 2x over to the other side. And so dy dx would be 2x divided by 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. 